What is going on YouTube? One only X from here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video. Get to review a motorcycle I've actually been really interested in trying out because it is the competitor to the Ducati Street Fighter that I currently own. Check this thing out. The KTM Super Duke 1290R. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please give me that thumbs up for this video. If you haven't checked out any of my other stuff, please do. And if you like it, hey, subscribe. So we got the 2018 KTM Super Duke 1290R which is interesting because I believe the CCs is 1301. So I uh, downplay it a little bit, but hey. So let's get into some little specs here because we're gonna go over more of the riding experience and some of the stuff that I noticed about it, more so than just the numbers. The numbers are impressive though. 177 horsepower or 174 horsepower actually. And 104 pound feet of torque. <laughs> Let that sink in for a second. The speed triple that I rode last week was 92 pound-feet of torque. This is even more. <laughs> what really makes the torque noticeable with the KTM is as you come out of turns, you just picks up and it's, it's everywhere. Granted, it's a twin, so when you're at 3,000 RPM in any gear, same thing the way the Ducati twins were, you had to be switching between gears because it really hates 3,000 RPM. But once you go to 6,000 RPM, that motor comes alive and this is just an absolute animal. I got to ride it in street and track mode and between the two, you can really tell a difference in the throttle response. The throttle response in street mode is nice. It's linear, I guess as linear as a twin can be. And then once you go again above 6,000 RPM, it comes alive, but the throttle response doesn't get any more choppy. It stays very nice and smooth, but once you go to track, if you're not paying attention or not really thinking about it, I turned around and it got in first gear, really got on the throttle and it just punched me up. And it's like, it wants to do a wheelie. This thing can be a hooligan machine. Talk about the ride. I want to talk about the suspension real quick. It's a brand that I've never really heard of, which is WP, but that doesn't mean that it's bad. The actual suspension itself is tight enough and stiff enough when we want to play going through those twisties, but also plush enough to be able to soak up some of the bumps. One thing KTM is usually really known for is their ergonomics. And this 1290 is no different. I believe the seating position is comfortable. It's actually raked forward further than I thought I would be, but it's not to the point where it's uncomfortable. The rear sets are set down and back, you know, kind of as you expect but they're again, comfortably suck up into the tank really nicely. The one thing I will point out though, is the seat right here, I'm back against it. I kind of want to go a little bit further back and really get that nice stretch to the handlebars, but that's just me, my height. I think anyone a little shorter is going to enjoy it as well, but it's not bad. And then as you can see, it is kind of tall. I'm on my tippy toes a little bit. So shorter riders, you may have to drop it down. This seat that's on here is an aftermarket KTM seat. So I like it. It's got a very good feel to it. It's very plush, but also it's got enough stickiness to it. So if you want to move around, once you move, you stay locked in place. And so again, with any bike, I always talk about the brakes because to me, they're re really set really good bikes apart from other ones that are just really fast. They don't have the feel. The Brembo's that are on here are strong. I will say the initial pull, it doesn't feel like a lot is going on, but as you start to progressively brake, you start to feel the power of these brakes, which I guess when you're pushing, it's not quite ideal. You want to know that it's stopping and slowing you down, but in the streets and, and around town or anything like that, it's fine because you're not going to touch the brakes and just lurch and make it a hard stop. You're going to be able to do a smooth and controlled, but overall the braking power with these Brembo's is very, very good definitely one of the stronger sets you can feel but as far as like if i were to compare them to the speed triples i think the speed triples are a little more powerful but again it's a different braking system so this bike is actually equipped with a few extra goodies the track mode isn't actually a mode that comes stock you have to get what's called the track pack also the quick shifter that this has which actually works really nicely is another addition to it so ktm is kind of smart to where you can buy this bike base and then sort of pick and choose what you want to put on it. And I kind of like that. You either want to spend a little more money and make it more track focused, you can. KTM uses a key. <laughs> Jeez, all of these bikes now that have keys. 
I actually did a test to see how this works because apparently there's a flaw with this key system. But you have to be about this close in order for it to even be picked up. Push this little button over here, got a key, and then it says ready to race. Turn this kill switch on and you hear it kick on. You see this nice little dash. It's a very simplistic dash is what I'll call it. <laughs> in comparison to its competitors, it's simplistic. And then let's hear it for a little bit. Not a bad sounding exhaust. It's stock. Not a cold start, by the way. Nice thumping V twin. And it's off. Push the key again. And there you go. That's how she starts. So what's cool about the dash, again, it's very pedestrian, if you will, but there is a fuel gauge. So Ducati, why can't you do that? And then you can kind of cycle through some of the modes here. You hit the set button and that allows you to cycle through. You have sport, street, rain. And again, if you have the track pack, you have the track setting. And then you can choose between those ride modes. And as you cycle through them more, you can go up and down. You have your ABS, traction control, stability control, MSR, which I believe is slip, which again, you guys can comment down below and let me know if I'm wrong. You go through the settings, you see a Bluetooth quick shifter, your daytime running lights, you can turn those on or off, change your shift light, audio, again, if you connect through here. What was cool about the speed triples that had fuel range, well, you can have that also in the KTM, which, which surprisingly, this is a 2018, so this is four years older than that 2022, and it has all those things already. So KTM's well ahead of what some of these other bikes do as far as what they like to show their riders. This dash, it's, it's more, it's all you really need. There's nothing super that stands out. You see the, the rev counter really well, the miles per hour and the gear, and that's really all they give you. And it's, it's not bad. Some, some of these bikes, they're overloaded in information on it. And KTM says, no, we don't need any of that. What do I think of the 2018 KTM Super Duke 1290R? It is a visceral experience, something that I honestly miss with the older Ducati that I had. It vibrates in a way that lets you know that you're really accelerating on a monster. It picks up speed like none other. Because of that 104 pound feet of torque, it comes out of turns very, very strong and sometimes too strong, but there's really good electronics on here that aren't insanely intrusive. Again, I had on the street during those rides and then I went to track. And again, I went through some turns decently accelerating and it never stepped out once into anything weird. It's a very capable machine, but it really lets you feel alive. I think the riding experience in of itself really sets it apart from its rivals. And the, like I said, the speed triple that I rode was very smooth. This it's on a different level and I can see why people really enjoy it because it, it just makes you smile. You grin ear to ear because you want to be a hole again. And at the 1290 or 1301 CCs, it's really easy to be if you really want to be one. I can't thank Crow Arizona enough for allowing me to rise brand new to him, Beast, because it is exactly that. It's very comfortable, it's very fast. And I tell you what, these naked bikes, they're, they sort of change your mind a little bit with how performance should be. And uh, <laughs> it's so much fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. This thing's a monster. Stay tuned for the comparison between this and the Ducati Street Fighter V4S that I have, because I'm gonna kind of go over some of the little tidbits that I found to be pluses and minus in comparison to both. So with that, you all have a good one. I'm out.